Michael Jordan had 25 game winners in his career, 24 of which came with less than 10 seconds on the clock. The only other player in the conversation as the GOAT, LeBron James, leads in a similar statistic. LeBron also leads all NBA players in game time, or go-ahead shots, in the final possession. These players' almost supernatural ability to sink difficult shots with all eyes on them comes from the way they have adapted to the pressure. Watch videos of Jordan's and LeBron's game winners, and you can see it in their approach coming out of the timeout. In their face as they catch the ball, in their movements as they release, they are assured. As much as they can, they're going to treat it like just another shot. And that's why it goes in. But in order to do that, it comes down to two things. There's two things that define whether or not you guys will be able to win at a consistent clip and whether or not you guys will be the ones that cut down those final nets. And those two things are preparation and performance. Everything comes down to preparation and performance. I'm a big believer that there's a, kind of a, a three-step construct to performing in high pressure situations. And these are what we need to do in order to be in the present moment. You know, after all, if you want to win the moment, you have to be in the moment. Stay where you can have an impact. Right here, right now. You got five minutes left in the game and your mind is worried about whether or not you're going to win the game, which is five minutes into the future. It means you're not fully present with the task at hand. You have to be focused on the play that is directly in front of you. If I had to pick one fundamental strategy to help manage stress, it's to live in the present moment. Even if the present moment is stressful, A, you'll be able to handle it better when you focus on it, and B, there's only so much stress one present moment can offer. Stop getting upset over events from your past and getting anxious about a future that hasn't happened yet and may not happen at all. Second is put all of your focus, both players and coaches, into the only two things you have 100% control over 100% of the time, and that's your own effort and your own attitude. And you need to learn how to let go and untether from the things you have no control over. It's acknowledging that there is a difference between the outer world, what people say and what people do, and the inner world, which is how you choose to show up, your attitude and your perspective. And we can't be hijacked by everything that's going on around us. So we have to have thoughtful, intentional responses. It's completely up to us how we choose to respond to any situation. Any emotional currency you invest into something that you have 0% control over is completely futile. It's a waste of your time and effort. And then thirdly, uh, in both practice and in games, is focus the lens on the process. See, we don't control outcomes, but we have a much more firm grasp of controlling the process which is why you guys have to have that type of routine. You have to have a, 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 excellence is not something that's haphazard. It's not something that's luck. So don't worry about the macro and actually winning the game. Worry about what you can do in this moment to give your team a better chance to win. And if everyone can collectively do that consistently, then you increase the chance that your team will have the most points on the scoreboard. So all of these things need to be uh, conditioned and practiced and rehearsed in actual practice so that it carries over to the game. If you only take games seriously, but you don't take practice seriously, then you won't be the player that you're capable of. And you certainly won't be the team that you're capable of. So preparation during the unseen hours is the number one separator for players and for teams. Elite athletes like Serena Williams, LeBron James, and Tom Brady feel pressure just as we all do. But they have learned how to manage the feeling of pressure in their response to it. Pressure is ultimately a perception. It's the, it's the story that we tell ourselves. It's the narrative that we have. It's this belief that this shot is more important than all of the previous shots that we took earlier in the game. So it's really, it's rather illusory if, if you think about it. 